In honor of Halloween, let's talk about Stephen King books. G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy and today I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite Stephen King books. I don't know if people are aware of this, but I am a huge Stephen King fan. I have been reading his books since the 70s. <laughs> that tells you how old I am anyway. My cousin Stacy introduced me to him and I think the very first book I read of his was Salem's Lot. And it's funny how much attitudes towards Stephen King's books has changed over the years. Back then, even in the 80s, he was considered a hack, a pulp writer, and his books were always denigrated, particularly as a lot of his books were made into films that didn't always hit the mark. That's all I'm going to say. But attitudes towards his writing has changed over the years. Now I see comments like, what a great storyteller, one of the best storytellers we have. And I thought, how strange is that? That it's taken so long for people to learn to appreciate his books. I wasn't one of them. No, I've always loved his books. And I think I became obsessed with his books in the 80s when I read The Stand. That was it for me. I was a complete convert. And I think I own pretty much everything he has ever written. Most of them in hardcover as well, which just goes to show how much I do love his books because hardcovers are definitely not cheap, especially in Australia. I generally reread his books every year. And in fact, I'm due. And I have several that I've kind of been storing up to read all together, which I'm looking forward to. So you need to be aware just how much of a big fan I am of Stephen King. Well, Stephen King is renowned for writing horror. He also writes in other genres. He writes hard case crime. He also writes fantasy and he writes thrillers as well. And quite often, many of his books fall within several genres. There also isn't always a supernatural element in his books. He's also a very prolific writer, which is awesome because that means more books, right? I think he's written something like 65 novels, I think. And he brings one out almost every year. And he has a plethora of short stories as well. I'm not going to include any short stories in this list. It is only going to be novels. And it's been really hard to rank these. I always have difficulty ranking books. I always know my favorites, like my top two or three, but the rest could kind of go anywhere on the list. And I think my lists are generally very fluid because they change with my mood. They change with when I reread a book and I think, oh, this should have been higher or lower on the list. So take it for what it is. Okay, let's start with number 10, which is this. The Dark Half. This is about a writer who prefers to write literary fiction, but to make ends meet, writes, I think, crime novels. And after making enough money, he decides to kill off his main protagonist, George Stark. And what happens is George Stark refuses to remain dead. And that is all I want to tell you about the actual premise of the book. I really like this because it was different to some of his other novels. I love this idea of <laughs> a character coming to life and haunting you pretty much. And like all of King's books, it's his characters that make them. He is very good at writing characters. In my opinion, that is his great strength his character development, because his characters do develop. They also seem very realistic, very genuine. They act the way you expect somebody would act in an extraordinary situation. And I really like the protagonist, Thad Beaumont, as well as George Stark himself. Highly recommended if you haven't read it. And this is one of his older ones, I think. Number nine. 
needful things. Okay, I'm going to complain here. I cannot stand these book club editions because they're much shorter than a regular hardcover. And yet it is hard to find this now in a regular hardcover size. Nevertheless, I really love this one because it takes place in Castle Rock, which is very famous in King's books. Many of his books are based in this fictional town and you get to see recurring characters, which I really enjoy. It is about a stranger who comes to Castle Rock and sets up a shop called Needful Things who can find you what you want. Though, of course, you know there's always going to be a cost. Again, it is the characters that make his books. I love the sheriff and Polly, but the children. Yeah, I think King is excellent at writing children. They seem lifelike. He seems to have a real affinity with writing young children. And when I say young, I mean anywhere between, say, 8 and 14. This one has horror elements, I would say, but it is more, I think, psychological as to what price are you willing to pay for the things that you want. Highly recommend this as well. Number 8, Salem's Lot. When I first read this back in the 70s, whilst I liked it, I didn't love it. No, I will confess, I thought, mm, it's okay. <laughs> but rereading this recently, I loved it so much more. I think I appreciated it more as an adult. I loved how the tension just builds up throughout this book. The atmosphere is so scary, menacing, and all I'm going to say is it is about vampires. Yeah, for those who love vampire books. This is also one of his earliest books. It's not the first, I think that was Carrie, but this came out in 1975. So I wouldn't have been more than 13 or 14 when I read this the first time. Highly recommend it. Number seven, Mr. Mercedes. This is more a thriller rather than supernatural in nature. It is about a person who drives a Mercedes into a crowd and kills several people. Bill Hodges, I think he's retired at this point, is an ex-police officer who cannot shake off this tragic crime and is trying to find out who actually was driving the Mercedes. That's all I'm going to say about the premise. There is an excellent adaptation of this, a TV adaptation, starring Brendan Gleeson, I think it is. And whilst it isn't completely true to the book, it is close enough. I love the characters in this. I loved Bill. I loved Holly. I love so many of the characters. And it was a nice change from his usual supernatural book. Number six, and boy, this one is really heavy to lift and hold up. So I probably won't hold it very long. Under the Dome. This has been made into a TV adaptation as well, which I actually really enjoyed, but I loved this book even more. The premise is that a dome settles over a small town, blocking them from access to the outside world. I think what I love about his really thick books like this one is that he really delves into how people behave under stress. It can bring out the worst or the good in them. And of course it has many characters who he can explore at length in a book this big, because it is big, no doubts about it. But whilst I won't say that I loved the ending. I loved everything else in this book. I just loved watching how these characters behaved in this extraordinary situation. Number five, Joyland. This is a hard case crime book. This is not supernatural at all. And I absolutely loved this. I flew through it. This is about a young man who, just before he starts college, 
spends the summer working at a carnival and it was just so charmingly written. I felt like I could feel the summer breeze. I felt like I was 17 again and feeling all these emotions that the characters do. There is also, of course, a mystery, which is why it is called a hard case crime book. I just loved this book. And I know he has, I think, three in this series. I have not read the others, though I'm intending to very shortly. Nevertheless, this one is definitely one of my favorites. And I'll probably read it again soon because it's been a couple of years now since I read it. Number four, another heavy book, 112263. That is, I think, the date that JFK was assassinated. And this book, again, is quite different to his others. This one is about a man who discovers a way of traveling back in time and wondering if he should try to stop this assassination. That, I think, is the basic premise of it. One of the reasons I really loved this was we got to step back in time to see somebody from our time trying to maneuver his way through the different mores and customs even speech of the 60s it was like a glimpse into our past and i thought king seemed to do a fantastic job at capturing what i would have thought the 60s were like I was too young for that, in case you're wondering. <laughs> but anyway, King isn't always predictable, and he certainly wasn't in this. I did not know what was going to happen, though I know a fair bit about the assassination of JFK. There are many memorable characters. We also get to meet some famous characters in the book. There is also what I thought was a very touching romance as well. This one though, other than having time travel, is not supernatural in nature. There isn't really any horror, though there is a tense atmosphere that builds throughout the book. And I will say that there are some parts that do drag a little. Still, one of my favorites, and I think I've only read this one, so I might be due a reread soon. Number three, It. Most people will probably know this because of the films that came out recently. There was also a made for television film, which I really enjoyed, but I just adore this book. It's definitely one of my absolute favorites, not just of Stephen King's, but generally. I have read this more times than I can count and I have been wanting to reread it, but I'm not sure if I'll get to it this year. Maybe next year, we'll see. The story, for those who don't know, is about a group of young misfits who form a friendship in their formative years as a result of a tragedy that takes place in their small town, Derry, in Maine. There is a creature, Pennywise the Clown, who lives under the drains and seems to be taking young children. This group of misfits, I know they have a name and I can't remember the name of the gang now, but they actually band together to fight the clown. If I haven't said this already, the book is really split into two parts. The first part is when this group of misfits are children. The second part is when they are adults. My favorite part is when they are all children because I honestly just adore all of them. I think they are so well written that they spring to life on the page. Every time I read it, I feel like the kids are real, like I know these kids. And I just adore how they grow into this friendship, how they behave throughout the book. They are also very distinctive. Each child has their own character. I've said it before, King is fantastic at writing characters, in my opinion. And whilst they are also very realistic as adults, 
I just prefer them as kids. Highly recommend it if you have not read it, but it is very thick, as you can see, which is my favourites of his books, I think. Perhaps I should also mention that there is horror elements in this. If you've seen the films, then you know that already. But this is quite a, I don't want to call it graphic, though there is a real sense of menace throughout the book. <laughs> okay, we are on the last two, and I can never decide which one is my ultimate favourite of King's books. It kind of goes backwards and forwards. Sometimes they're equal, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. But for today, at least for today, and I know it will be different tomorrow, for today, number two is The Stand. <laughs> I adore this book. I have read this so many times, I'd say probably more than any of his other books. This is a post-apocalyptic story. <laughs> a little bit too close to home actually because it talks about a virus that wipes out not a small proportion of the population but 99% of the population and the rebuilding of society with now a very small group of people. But like all of his books it's the characters I adore. Characters like Stuart, a laconic, stoic character. Or Nick, oh, Nick the deaf mute. Then there is Franny, then there is Glenn and Nadine. Yeah, just so many characters that I feel I know intimately, most likely because I've read this so many times. After COVID occurred and we started going into lockdowns in Melbourne, I was reminded so forcibly of the stand that I wanted to read it and I decided no, I couldn't bear it. But I did read this last year and I loved it just as much as always because I just love so many of the characters. And the underlying question of can we learn from our mistakes or are we doomed to repeat them over and over again? Because basically, this group starts with a clean slate. All of society has been wiped away. Seeing these people trying to rebuild their lives after something catastrophic like Captain Trips, as this flu is called, was just absolutely fascinating. It is, I think, more the sociological aspects of this book that I really enjoyed though there is also a supernatural element. Whilst there is a group, our main heroes, who are forming a society, there is also their opposite, forming in <laughs> Las Vegas. I think that says a lot anyway, but the point is that it is a battle between good and evil and the gray shades in between. Whilst I won't say that there aren't some horrific elements in this book, that is definitely not the main focus for those who are hesitating. Regardless, I cannot recommend this book enough. It is definitely one of my all-time favourites. Number one may not come as a surprise to many people if you've been watching my channel. And even though I've generally been talking about novels, I'm going to be talking about the entire series. The Dark Tower. This is the first book in the series, The Gunslinger. It is also one of my favorites in the series, but it is very hard for me to choose one of the books from this series. Now this is more a fantasy rather than horror, though there are some supernatural things which take place, which is fantastical, right? It does have a sense of menace at times. It also has a very tense atmosphere. There are scenes that can be quite horrific, but I really don't believe that the Dark Tower series is horror in nature. What I love about this series so much is the characters, Roland in particular. He is one of my all time favorite characters in any book because he is so deeply flawed, so real and yet, in other ways, very heroic as well. 
the main premise of this book is that this world is dying. It is like another dimension which is similar but not identical to our own world. And Roland's driving goal is to reach the Dark Tower, hopefully to bring his world back into balance. During his travels, during this journey, he meets these other characters, the Cartet of Four, which is Eddie and Susanna and Jake. Seeing these characters develop, grow, interact, seeing how their relationships change with time, seeing what they are prepared to do for each other is just you know, one of my favorite things about this series. But like any book which has a journey, it isn't the ultimate goal that is so important as much as the journey itself and what the characters learn and are prepared to do to reach that goal particularly Roland. Now the ending, <laughs> yes, the ending is controversial. There are people who hate it, people who love it. I'm one of those who absolutely loved it. I thought there could not have been a better ending. It was perfect for this series. Though part of me does hate it as well, I won't deny it. Ultimately, this series is about these characters, the journey they undertake and what they learn about themselves during this journey. But as I said, I cannot decide on which book in this series, though I do have some which I prefer to others, but The Gunslinger itself is, I would say, a little different from some of the other books. It's also one of his shorter books. And yet, I love it because it is so different and unexpected. I thought that the first time I read it, I thought it when I read it a few years ago. But I really cannot recommend this series enough for all fans of horror, even though it really isn't strictly speaking horror, and for all fans of fantasy. Well, that is my favorite top 10 Stephen King books today anyway, because it does change all the time. Now I would love to hear what your favorites are. And you can let me know down in the comments or you can contact me on Instagram. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really do appreciate all of you. And if you like this video, then you can do the usual. You can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you enjoy your Halloween. Until next time, bye. which is my absolute favorite. <laughs> this is a hard case book. <laughs>